Hey everyone, welcome to another installment of Harry Potter Theory. Today, we'll be discussing the history of the all-wizarding village of Hogsmeade. Located in the Scottish Highlands near the unplottable castle of Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry, Hogsmeade Village is presumed to have been founded around the same time as the neighbouring school, putting its establishment around the 10th or 11th century. As such, Hogsmeade Village has been in existence for centuries, and was originally founded by a medieval English wizard who went by the name Hengist of Woodcroft. Many have noted that Hogsmeade is the only all-wizarding village in the entirety of Britain, which legend has it was done intentionally by Hengist of Woodcroft in an effort to help protect witches and wizards from muggle persecution, which was of course incredibly common during the Middle Ages. Since then, due to the fact that Hogsmeade is populated entirely by residents who are part of wizarding society, the village has been made a target by other magical species who have found themselves in conflict with witches and wizards over the centuries. For example, the village has been attacked multiple times by goblin kind, with the first instance being in 1612, when a goblin rebellion was carried out in and around Hogsmeade. A goblin revolt once again brought unrest to the village in 1890, when the goblin Ranrock and his followers unleashed a troll upon the village during his rebellion campaign of the late 1800s. Fortunately since then, Hogsmeade has experienced a period of somewhat uninterrupted peace. Of course, there have been times throughout the years in which the entire wizarding world has experienced violence and unrest, which has extended to the village of Hogsmeade although none of these later conflicts have had to do with the fact that Hogsmeade is an all-wizarding settlement. Most notably since the 1800s, though, Hogsmeade has been affected by the uprisings of the two most infamous modern-day dark wizards, Gellert Grindelwald and Lord Voldemort. In combination, these two wizards have been responsible for the vast majority of violence witnessed in Hogsmeade throughout the 20th century. This of course includes the horrific Battle of Hogwarts on May 2nd, 1998, in which residents of the village came to the aid of those fighting Voldemort and his Death Eaters on the grounds of Hogwarts. During more peaceful times, the village is quite the sight to behold. Whether you travel there by foot, secret passage, more on that in just a moment, or by train, Hogsmeade Village is incredibly quaint in appearance, and a rather lovely place to visit. As with many villages of this size in the Scottish Highlands, this is especially true around the holidays, as noted by Harry the first time he visits Hogsmeade, close to Christmas time in 1993. Hogsmeade looked like a Christmas card. The little thatched cottages and shops were all covered in a layer of crisp snow. There were holly wreaths on the doors, and strings of enchanted candles hanging in the trees. Although it has evolved since it was first established during medieval times, with modern additions to the village, such as a train station, Hogsmeade has presumably remained the same in a number of ways. For example, it seems likely that it has always had a main road running through it, as most settlements do. Today, this road is known as High Street and is the location of the majority of Hogsmeade's most popular establishments, like the sweet shop Honeydukes. High Street is of course the primary point of attraction for visitors who come to the village, including Hogwarts students except for maybe those who are interested in walking over to see the Shrieking Shack, the haunted house which sits abandoned on the outskirts of Hogsmeade. For visitors who prefer less frightening attractions, however, the village also offers around two dozen shops that sell everything from magical items of just about every kind to butterbeer. There's even an owl post to send your mail. With so many exciting places to visit within the village, it's no wonder that Hogwarts students enjoy spending their time there, not to mention, it's just a short walk away from the castle and its grounds. It's likely due to this enthusiasm that Hogwarts passed the 1714 Edict, which proclaimed that students could regularly visit the village on certain weekends throughout the school year. And so, since 1714, it has been a tradition for those in their third year or above at Hogwarts to visit the village, but only with a parent or guardian's permission, of course. Fortunately for those unlucky few who are unable to secure permission from their families, such as Harry Potter, walking isn't the only way to get to Hogsmeade. In fact, there are many number of secret passageways and tunnels that connect the Hogwarts grounds to the village, as Harry is made aware of thanks to Fred and George Weasley, who gift him with the magical Marauder's Map. This map showed a set of passages he had never entered, and many of them seemed to lead right into Hogsmeade, said Fred, 
tracing one of them with his finger. There are seven in all. Now, Filch knows about these four, he pointed them out, but we're sure we're the only ones who know about these. Don't bother with the one behind the mirror on the fourth floor. We used it until last winter, but it's caved in, completely blocked. And we don't reckon anyone's ever used this one, because the Whomping Willow's planted right over the entrance. But this one here, this one leads right into the cellar of Honeydukes. We've used it loads of times, and as you might have noticed, the entrance is right outside this room, through that one-eyed old crone's hump. Soon after this exchange with the Weasley twins, Harry discovered this particular secret tunnel firsthand. Descendium, Harry whispered, tapping the stone witch again. At once, the statue's hump opened wide enough to admit a fairly thin person. Harry glanced quickly up and down the corridor, then tucked the map away again, hoisted himself into the hole head first, and pushed himself forwards. He slid a considerable way down what felt like a stone slide, then landed on cold, damp earth. He stood up, looking around. It was pitch dark. He held up his wand, muttered Lumos, and saw that he was in a very narrow, low, earthy passageway. The passage twisted and turned, more like the burrow of a giant rabbit than anything else. Harry hurried along it, stumbling now and then on the uneven floor, holding his wand out in front of him. It took ages. Now, while it was rather wonderful for our dear boy Harry to have learned of these passageways connecting Hogwarts to Hogsmeade, they do bring up a few rather important questions about the village itself. Who built them, and why? If Hogsmeade was established around the same time as the school, it's quite possible that Hengist of Woodcroft worked alongside the anonymous architect of Hogwarts to build these tunnels, although for what purpose is anyone's guess. It's also possible that these two wizards worked together only to create one or two of the seven secret passageways, as we know that the tunnel connecting the village to the school through the Shrieking Shack and Whomping Willow was created by Albus Dumbledore for the express purpose of providing Remus Lupin a place to safely transform into his werewolf self as a student during full moons. So much for the Shrieking Shack being haunted. Then, of course, there's the passage that leads from Hogwarts' Room of Requirement to the Hogshead Inn in the village. This tunnel may very well have been initially created by a student in need of food who was passing by or already inside the Room of Requirement, meaning that it was the room's magic that opened up the passageway to the inn. It's also possible that several of the tunnels connecting the village to the school were built and used during times of war, as seen with this last passageway during the Battle of Hogwarts. For it was during this time that the tunnel was used to ferry witches and wizards onto the school's grounds, undetected, to fight against Voldemort, as well as to evacuate younger students from the school during the battle. And with that, we've come to the end of today's video. What did you think? Did I miss anything? Please share your thoughts in the comments below, and as always, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like it, and subscribe to the channel. Until next time, remember, it does not do to dwell on dreams, and forget to live.